There's a question that I think you might be asking yourself, which is why would you try to build your application using the reactive approach when you can just use, you know, the procedural approach and everything would work fine? Well, in addition to all the advantages of not having to subscribe and unsubscribe in the components, you also have performance advantage. So Angular and the backend use something called a change detection strategy. And by default, it's going to use the check always strategy, which is always going to be checking for changes in a component and then update the UI appropriately. And what Angular is doing is it's looking for every change in all your components for everything that is bound in the UI and then update everything appropriately in case there is a change in the component. However, when you use a reactive approach, you have the option to use the unpush strategy, which is only going to look for change when there is an input change. So if you're using the input and then there's a change on that property on the class or when you're using event emitters and then there's an event that is emitted, or in our case, when you're using observable and the observable emits. So because we're only using observable and we're subscribing in the template or in the UI using the async pipe, we can actually improve our entire application performance by using the unpush change detection. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do this right now. So let's go back to the application and implement this uh, strategy. So we're going to scroll all the way up. So you know that we can pass metadata in the add component and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go up here. And then I'm going to put a comma and then go on a new line. And then I'm going to type in change detection. You can see it's coming up here and we're going to call the change detection strategy. And then we're going to change this to on push. What this is going to do is it's going to check for changes only when this component initialize. So for example, if I had a variable like name equal, and then let's say I set this to junior, right? So whenever the component is initialized, I have this name and I'm using it in the UI using, you know, string interpolation or whatever, then it's going to read this and say, all right, okay. So this value is junior. This is only going to happen when the component initialize, like the first time this component is loaded. And then if somewhere down there, I change the value of this name. So I do this, that name equal, and then I set it to a different string. Angular is not going to pick up this change because we only have the on push. It's not going to look again for changes in the component and then update the UI. It's only going to do that for input for when an observable emits or when there is an event that emits some value. And in our case, we have observable. So all of these, well, we don't have a whole lot of things. We only have the entire application, which is inside of this observable. And then we have the filter observable and the loading observable. And I didn't need to have those in this class. I could have encapsulated them instead of this app data, but I just decided to put these two in the actual component itself. But I could have put these two properties inside of this object and then update it appropriately and then use the app data. So this guy and the component to manage this, you know, is loading and the filter status. So we could do that as well. That's another way you can actually tackle this. But Angular is not going to check for any variable that you set like this. It's only going to check once when the component initialized and it's not going to check ever again. So whenever you change this value, even if it's bound in the UI, it's not going to reflect. And you can see that we don't have anything that we're changing here. We have these two variable that were defined here. We're not setting them to anything else anywhere else in this class, right? We're just defining them here so that we can use them in the UI. So we don't have anything defined like a typical variable like this. We only have observables. So because observables are going to, you know, push changes and the on push is going to detect those and it's going to update the UI accordingly. So if we go to the application right now, we're not going to see like any difference because, you know, the performance improvement for this little application is probably minimal. Like you probably won't even be able to detect it, but that's a little bit more of an advanced topic, more advanced things that you can do with Angular when you're building your application. So you can take advantage of these little things uh, right now. This is small, like it doesn't even matter. But when the application is very large and the uh, default, so if I type in D, you can see the default here. And if we go in there, you can see the default is always checking. So it has a check always strategy. So it's constantly watching every variable that you set equal to something here that you change either here or in some other uh, component and it's watching for those changes. So the library is working really hard to keep track of all these changes. But when we change it to on push, remember, it's only going to check for input changes or when an event emit or when there is a, an observable that emits, which is what we're doing here. So this is definitely going to improve our, our performance. And that's why I wanted to show you an example where you can do that in your application. So now if we go back to the UI, everything should be the same, like everything will work. Nothing's going to be broken because we're binding these values 
values to the component using observable. We're not using like typical uh, variable declaration. And you can go ahead and test. Everything else should work as well. We can still ping or we can delete. Everything will work. So that's pretty much everything that I had for this course. And again, if you have any questions or something is not clear, you know, go ahead and reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you. And you might not want to do this every single time. Like for this application, for example, like I didn't really have to do it that way. But if this application were to grow, then you would see how this approach would be very, very helpful when the application gets really complex. But in a lot of cases, you don't really have to do this because your application is not going to, you know, have any complexities in it. Performance is really not something that you should worry about. So probably this approach is not something that you want to kill yourself to do, but it's a little bit of a more advanced way of coding with Angular and the guys at Google's and the big companies, that's how they create all this fancy application like Gmail and stuff. So that's how these applications are built. They're built in a very smooth and performance aware way because those applications have really, really heavy loads. And again, like I said, you might not want to do that every single time when you're building a little application, but it's a very, very interesting way or a very interesting approach to take when you're building your application. And again, if you have any question, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you and I'll see you guys in the next one.